Welcome back to part two of our tutorial on muzzle flash, where we will look at creating the bolt action and the ejecting brass shell out the side of the rifle. So just to recap, this is where we were at the end of part one. You can see we've got two muzzle flashes and smoke emitting from the gun. Right, so before we proceed, what I'm going to just do is clean up my project a bit to simplify matters. So I'm going to take all these layers, um, the flash, the smoke, and I am going to select them and just pre-compose them into another composition. So layer, pre-compose, I'll just call that flash and smoke. And let me just set that switch on to make sure all the transfer modes pass through. And I'm going to take just my bottom three layers, which is my guy with a rifle, and I'm also going to pre-compose them. So layer, pre-compose, done. And let me just call that man with gun. Right, so now we are ready to get going. So the first step I'll do is I'll create the bolt action. Let's just scrub through to where the flash happens. So what we want to do is right after the muzzle flash, we want the bolt to be sliding backwards. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate my man with gun layer. Then I will trim it to be one frame long. And this is going to give us the bolt that kind of moves back to this area on the gun. So what I will do is I'll zoom right in there. I will grab the pen tool and I'm just going to cut out the bolt on the rifle here. Now it really helps if you have some reference clips that you can look at to see what a real rifle does. Right, so there we go. I've got my, if I solo that layer, I've got the bolt. And I am just going to move that back. Let me hide my mask. I'm going to move that back to around here. Then the next step is I need to paint out or hide where the bolt is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a solid which has this kind of grayish blue color of the gunmetal here. So layer, new solid, use my color picker to pick this color here. Say OK. Then I'm just going to drop the opacity of this layer so I can see what I'm doing. That's good enough. And then I'll grab the mask tool again and just roughly draw around the area that I want to hide. Done. So let's bring the opacity of this layer back up. There we go. And I'm just going to feather this mask a few pixels. That's a pretty good job. Now the next thing I need to do is just as the bolt slides back I need the breech to be open here. So we'll just do something that looks like that. We'll create the illusion of it being open by just shaping a black solid. So layer new solid. And there's our black solid, and again I'll drop the opacity of it so I can see what I'm doing. Grab the pen tool, and I'm going to trace around this breach area. Again, this is where it pays to have reference of a real gun, so you know what this looks like. There we go, I've got our mask. Turn the opacity back up on this layer. And I probably won't turn it all the way up because it'll look a bit fake. I'll probably leave it around here, around 80 or 90 percent. And again I'll just feather the edges of this mask ever so slightly. Right, so what I need to do now is just trim this black solid to be one frame in duration in line with my bolt action and the same with this pale blue gray layer. Trim it to be one frame in duration. And obviously these two layers need to be underneath flash and smoke. So I'm just going to move my flash and smoke back to the top. Right, let's do a RAM preview of this and see where we're at. You'll see if I scrub through this slowly, the kind of effect we're getting. Now, what you might want to try is you might want this bolt action to be two frames in duration instead of one. But that's really up to you. I've just done it to one frame here. Um, but sometimes keeping the bolt open for two frames tends to look better. 
Right, so let's just jump ahead in time. What I've done is I've actually animated um, both bolts, well, the two instances where it happens. And um, just to show you the difference, the front one I've actually set to be two frames in duration. So let's take a look. There you go, you're seeing the desired effect. So we've got that bolt moving now. Our next step is to create the brass ejecting shell. So we will start by making a new composition and I'm gonna call this brass shell texture. I'm just gonna make sure it's an HD composition like my master comp. And let's just make it, I don't know, 10 seconds long. It's longer than we need. Start with a new black solid. And to this we will apply fractal noise. Right, so now what you want to do with this noise is open the transform property, scale it up quite a bit, push the contrast up, and then under scale, turn off uniform scaling, and scale it quite large in the height, and just leave the width where it is. Then we are again going to open up the properties for this actual layer, the scale properties, unlock the X and Y scale, and we are now going to scale this layer up on the Y until we get these long streaky bits. Right, then to this we will apply Blur, Fast Blur. Just pull this up to a value that gives you a result something like that. Then next we will apply CC Toner. So if you just search for it in your effects and presets, you'll find it. Drag it across and drop it onto this layer. What you want to do in the dialog box here is set your highlights to be a kind of goldy yellow. Somewhere there. Your midtones to be kind of where they are, I guess, a brassy brown, maybe a little bit more to the golder spectrum, somewhere there. And your shadows to be a dark brassy brown. Probably something like that. Now just looking at this, I think we need to go back to our fractal noise and bring our brightness setting down a fraction. There we go, that looks about right. Right, so now I need to go and create another composition, new composition, and I will call this composition 3D Shell. Say OK. Take the brass shell texture we've just made, drop it into this comp. And to this layer, we are now going to apply an effect called CC Cylinder. So come across to your effects and presets and type in Cylinder. There it is, CC Cylinder. Drag it, drop it onto that layer. And you can see immediately this is the default. So let's go to the dialog box here, open up our position settings and just push it back in the Z axis so we can see what we're getting. And if I access the rotation properties and I rotate this on the X axis, you can see what we've got. We've got this kind of cylinder using our brass texture. So I'm going to leave it around there somewhere, probably at about 35 degrees. And this is obviously way too thick for a rifle shell, so I'm going to just scale the radius right down somewhere there. Right, now as the shell is ejected from the breech, I want it to spin in the air. So I want it to spin around the Z axis, or Z axis as the Americans say. Um, so I'm going to keyframe it at frame 0, go to the end of my 10 second comp and set a keyframe for about 25 revolutions. And if we, if we RAM preview this, let's see what we're getting. So great, I'm very happy with that. Um, the only thing I'd like to change is that at the moment the shell is spinning around its center point. I would like it to spin around the base of the shell where kind of all the weight is. And that's what tends to happen in real life is the shells don't spin around their center point, they tend to spin around the base. Um, and unfortunately there's no way to move the pivot point here in CC Cylinder that I can find. So the only way to do it is to come back to your shell texture here. So what you need to do is create a new solid, it can be any color, I like to use white. And this solid will be a mat for your shell texture layer. So it'll be above it, which is correct. Grab a mask and Kind of mask it just below the halfway point in your comp, so somewhere around there, I guess. Then 
click on your bottom layer which is all the fractal noise with the toner effect and set that to use the layer above it as an alpha mat. There we go. So now we don't have a full frame texture anymore and if I go back to our 3D shell you will see it has chopped the bottom off our shell and made our shell a whole lot shorter which has the effect of it now rotating more around the base instead of the center. Um, so what we need to do now is this is looking a little bit like a 357 magnum shell we need it to be proportioned more like a rifle shell, so I will just take the radius down to make it a bit skinnier. There we go. So we are nearly there with the shell. What I'm going to want to do now is put a bit of motion blur onto it. Unfortunately, again, with CC Cylinder, um, Adobe After Effects's motion blur settings don't seem to kick in. So we will just apply effect blur, radial blur to this. Um, and leave it set to spin and what you want to do is take the center point it's actually more or less in the correct place maybe move it down just a fraction and you can leave it set to 10 um, if I scrub through you'll see what this is doing it's just giving us a nice little bit of motion blur on our shell you can maybe take this up even 20 there we go right I'm just going to switch that radial blur off for, off for now so we can see what we are doing um, there's our shell, I'm very happy with that. Now what we want to do is you see the inside of our shell is a little bit brightly lit at this point. So let's just get a good angle there. So the inside of our shell is very brightly lit. So what you want to do is duplicate this layer, click on the top layer, open CC Cylinders properties for render and change to outside. Then for the bottom version of it, change the render settings to inside. Then on this inside variant we will open up the lighting properties, take down the light intensity, open up the shading properties and take down the ambient settings. There we go. Now we can see we've got a dark in inside of our shell um, but it still is catching the little highlights and doing what it needs to do. So there's our shell spinning in space and let's just switch on our radial blur for both of these layers again. Right, so there we have our spinning shell. Let's RAM preview that. So we've got a nice motion blurred shell glinting and spinning in space. So the next step is to take our 3D shell and to place it into our comp with our gun flash. So let's go back to our master comp find our frame where our flash goes off and step to the frame after it where our bolt is moving and open and let's grab our 3D shell layer drag it and drop it below your flash and smoke but above your bolt so immediately we're obviously going to have to scale this right down so I'll access my scale property and what you also want to do is you want to just slip this layer forward a few frames until the shell is aligned with the bolt probably around there, move it here to where the bolt is, let's scale it down a whole lot more, there we go, that's kind of a more believable bullet shell size, um, so I'll trim the layer so that its endpoint is there and I will set a position keyframe for it here, so keyframe position, then we're going to step forward about four or five frames, so one, two, three, four, five, and the shell at this point would be flying off screen somewhere here. Sometimes they fly a bit up, sometimes they fly level, sometimes they fly down. Uh, this first shell I will send downwards. Then these two keyframes I want to change to Bezier Curve. So keyframe interpolation and I will say spatial interpolation Bezier please. And say OK. And what this will allow me to do now is grab these Bezier Curve handles and just craft the shape of this curve as they leave the gun. So you probably want something like that. And if I RAM preview that for you, so as I scrub through, you can see the shell flying off the frame. Um, obviously we need to integrate the shell a little bit into our background, so I'm just going to maybe darken it a bit and cool it down. It's feeling a bit gold and warm. Um, we've got this nice blue flare behind it, so I'm going to go to my effects and presets and look for something called photo filter. There it is. Let's drag that, put that on our shell. And I'm going to use a preset here, one of the blue ones, cooling filter 82. 
There we go, and immediately you can see what it's doing if I just zoom in here to our shell that's flying through air. There's without the photo filter, there's with the photo filter. So it just helps it to integrate into the scene. Maybe I'll even turn this up to say 35. There we go. Um, and then something that really helps with realism, obviously, is turning on motion blur for this layer. So here in the layer properties, I will just enable motion blur, and I'll enable motion blur for the comp. Ooh, look at that. Okay, let's take a look at this in a RAM preview. I'm just going to make my work area a bit smaller. Here we go. So there we have our shell spinning through the air and flying off. Now what I'll do is I will duplicate that shell for the second shell and I will change its path ever so slightly. So I'll just duplicate my shell layer, move it to where it needs to be, which is right here after the second flash. And what I want to do is I'm just going to switch off motion blur for that layer for now so we can see what we're doing. I probably want the shell to rotate slightly differently to how the previous shell rotated, so let's just slip these position keyframes further right. That looks good enough. Trim this layer and slip it all back to where it needs to be. So as I scrub through, you can see what that shell is doing. So all we need to do now is change these position keyframes, specifically the final one. So this shell, I will say, traveled upwards ever so slightly, probably to somewhere there. So all we need to do is just change this Bezier curve a fraction. Right, there we go. Let's turn on our motion blur again and RAM preview this. Great, so that's it. You can see what we're getting. Nice believable muzzle flash with smoke, with bolt action, and with ejecting brass. Thanks for watching this tutorial. In one of our upcoming tutorials, we'll cover doing a whole ejecting stream of brass, as you see in this shot with the MP5, um, using particle effects that you find right inside Adobe After Effects to animate the shells. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Scott Newman, and stay tuned.